Well, warm greetings to you from me, Colin, and from the Southern Counties Baptist Association team. There's been lots of talks about roadmaps recently for obvious reasons. And finally, we've got the four steps to freedom, as one newspaper puts it. Uh, that means that we might be on the cusp of seeing an end to the lockdown and all the restrictions that have gone with it. The newspapers have really enjoyed thinking about this and giving us all sorts of headlines. One goes, the end is in sight. Another one says, PM reveals roadmap to better days. Another one says, 118 days until freedom. Uh, yes, another says, midsummer's dream. And uh, finally, one other one says, the way to escape, because of course there are stages along the way for the possible opening up of British society and life. Roadmap, it's, a, it's a, a very accessible picture and the road is a picture, the way is a picture which actually features strongly biblically as well. We could think about the fact that Jesus himself is the road. I am the road, hodos, the way, the truth and the life. But I want us to particularly join two disciples who are trying to make head and tail of what's been going on in Jerusalem following Passover where Jesus has been crucified and they're on their way back to Emmaus probably where they live and as they make their way back they're joined by a stranger at least someone who's not recognizable to them and as as the uh, journey proceeds three miles an hour the journey proceeds over several miles back to Emmaus they get to tell all that's been going on, the agonies, the dashed hopes, the disillusionment, um, everything that they were trying to compute and get their head round around how could God have been in that. And then to make it all even more difficult, the rumour of resurrection which has reached their ears about Jesus appearing. And Far from it making uh, everything okay, the fact that there's this rumour of resurrection, it seems to have kept them in as much turmoil as before. It's a bit like the roadmap that we've got at the moment, if you like. There's a sense that actually there's a light at the end of the tunnel, we're coming through the tunnel, but still aware that there's all sorts of decisions that will need to be made. And going back and returning to things is good and it's got challenges. Well, uh, when uh, they get back to Emmaus, they thought they'd, uh, they'd purchased a single on the way out, but it proves to be a return because there's a complete change of mind and heart for them through their encounter with Jesus, through the debrief that they get, through their sense of God helping them to understand how he could have been involved in the suffering on the cross. And through their, of course, physical, tangible sense and knowing of Jesus as bread is broken and given thanks for. It's an astounding journey. Two to three hours, whatever it is. But within that time, they become so energised, hope is so properly restored, that actually they have the uh, enthusiasm and energy to actually dash back to Jerusalem, where they find the other disciples also regaling the goodness of the fact that Jesus has appeared. And when they get to tell their bit of the story, they tell what happened on the road, is what Luke 24 says. They say what happened on the road. And I think what I want us to reflect on is the fact that the change that happened in them was all about a full and proper and good debrief some theological reflection, there it is, right there in Luke 24, as Jesus explains how it could be that the Messiah could suffer in this way. And also some personal experience of the close nearness of Jesus, who they loved and who they'd followed. And that was enough. So when they go back, they go back to the place which is still a place of danger and fear and uncertainty and of course all the memories and evocations of pain and sadness that's gone with what's happened to Jesus and to the disciples in Jerusalem. All that's still facing them in a way but it looks different. It feels changed because of this Emmaus encounter that they've had with Jesus. 
And so they go back ready to, as it were, face into the challenges. There'll be another experience of Jesus in Luke 24, and there'll also be that wait for the Holy Spirit to come, so that the mission to which they're called can get going, energised by the Holy Spirit, but it gets going from the tough place, Jerusalem, the city where it's all happened and all gone pear-shaped on one version of events. So returning. Returning means also, first of all, being re-energised and gaining fresh vision. And the way we do that is to make space within ourselves internally to be able to accept what lies before us and uh, have space to focus on the challenges that lie ahead. And part of the space that was made in the disciples was this great phrase from Jesus, what things? What things have been going on as though he didn't know? And they get to tell the story and debrief with him. So I want to do two things as we conclude this reflection. The first is to commend to you the possibility of entering into this story personally and telling the what things and listening out for how God responds and accompanies you. But you know, sometimes it's really helpful to do that sort of thing in a held space with someone else facilitating but not interfering with what's going on and giving a light way forward, some signposts as it were, on the road. And if you're interested in that, I want to tell you about something that's coming up from Southern Counties uh, soon after Easter. It's going to be some small groups. Their focus and their theme is Emmaus Encounter. They'll run for just under an hour and a half. They'll be safe and we pray and trust well led. And within those, you'll get the chance to um, go on your own journey with Jesus, your own Emmaus encounter. Because what we've been experiencing in this last year can't simply be quickly moved on from. It does need processing. I think it does need debriefing. I need to debrief what's been going on. The pandemic has ex affected all of us individually in a unique way, as well as all of us corporately in a shared way. So I commend those to you, but if you don't manage to book in for one of those, and we'll let the details be known quite soon, then it may be that you simply join Jesus for some prayerful space to do some debrief and to bump into him afresh for the return, eventually, to how life was, even though we know that things will have changed and there are challenges with that. God bless you as you do that. The Lord be alongside you for your Emmaus journey and Emmaus encounter.